Hey guys, Zane here with another One Take Review. Today I want to talk about the 1982 self-titled debut from Bad Brains, the classic punk band from Washington, D.C. Um, I've always felt that Bad Brains were a band that were very undersold musically, even today. I mean, that's in terms of both musical ability and influence throughout uh, modern music. I mean, besides the fact that they're a very talented group, which I'll go into in a moment, from bands like Black Flag, to the Red Hot Chili Peppers, to even the Beastie Boys and certain hip-hop groups, and even to future reggae, the more uh, abrasive side of reggae that no one really ever talks about, but does in fact exist, have all really been influenced by Bad Brains over the years, and I feel like that's something that never really gets talked about, unfortunately, especially since they were releasing albums as amazing as their self-titled record this early in their career. Now, Bad Brains' self-titled debut, as you may have guessed by the fact that it is a hardcore album, is built on nothing but just the pure energy that it uses to deliver song after song after song. And that's just really the uh, defining factor of it. And I know that a lot of people think that this record is obnoxious, and I do understand that. But I personally think that that raw garage-like energy mixed with very low-budget, lo-fi production makes for just a very engaging and uh, personal listen. It almost feels like you're at some underground kind of a punk club, or maybe even in one of the members' garage, just listening to them thrash out with the occasional reggae song just randomly thrown into the mix. And I do think that this very uh, raw, animated kind of performance style is really what defines the band and the record sound overall. And I think that uh, that sound that I just mentioned is heavily, heavily carried by the band's frontman. Paul Hudson, who is better known as HR, which is an acronym for Human Rights, is the band's vocalist and, like I just said, kind of the uh, driving force of that power that the band delivers here. I mean, throughout the course of Bad Brains' entire career, he kind of was the defining member that could never uh, properly be replaced if he were to leave, but that role would be slightly lessened on future records, whereas on their self-titled album, he is he is in the spotlight here. Uh, HR is really just a fantastic vocalist with so much power in his vocals that really can't be matched in any other way, or at least not by uh, any other hardcore artist that I can think of, or maybe only a select few. I mean, the way that HR just screams and cries and wails at certain points on songs like uh, Band in DC is just absolute chaotic madness, but at the same time, it's sort of a controlled style with a slight reggae influence, especially you will see on other actual reggae tracks that I'll talk about in a moment. But there's just so many influences and that shaky style of vocals that can either really hit and work for people like HR or Jell Biafra, or completely miss for other artists, kind of works perfectly with this album and that just low-budget, raw kind of sound overall. Like I just said about HR's voice, uh, this entire self-titled album has a lot of reggae influences in it. Um, that can obviously be most seen through the actual reggae tracks. You have I Love Aja and also Leaving Babylon, which are non-instrumental tracks. There's vocals and lyrics that go with them. And those are horribly underrated, in my opinion. Every time this record gets brought up, people either just forget to mention those completely or they dismiss them as not being essential to the album. But I think that... They break the album up appropriately, if not slightly awkwardly, depending on which way you look at it or the sort of a uh, mood that you're into when you're listening to it, if you're specifically looking for something high octane. But I do think that they kind of break the album up accordingly and don't really uh, interrupt things too much. And then you also have the uh, reggae instrumental. It's just a short piece called Ja Calling, which is also nice. It's That is actually kind of a non-essential piece, but it's a nice little instrumental. But I do think that beyond those actual straightforward reggae tracks, there's still reggae influence in even the album's thrashier moments. I mean, those occasionally odd time signatures and just that sort of a very iconic performance style in terms of just a instrumentation and song progression can be found throughout this record in its uh, more hardcore moments. Albeit only slightly, if you were to play something to me like, say, Big Takeover, I wouldn't ever actually call it a reggae track. But if you told me that this band had its roots in reggae, I would say, okay, yeah, and I do think that this band has its roots in reggae and that it does show throughout this record. But beyond the actual instrumentation, 
besides those actual reggae songs, the biggest aspect of Bad Brains' self-titled album that uh, pulls from reggae is, in all honesty, its lyricism. Lyrically, Bad Brains are very political here more often than not. That is sort of to be expected. I mean, after all, reggae is arguably one of, if not maybe the most po politics-connected genre on the planet that's still relevant today. But at the same time, even those uh, non-reggae songs, which are perhaps the most straightforward political songs, there are hardcore numbers here that are also uh, very activism-based, like The Regulator, and I do think that Bad Brains handle things incredibly well, nothing feels over-the-top or uh, shallow or baseless or just saying something edgy for the sake of saying something politically edgy. They seem legitimate in uh, the stances that they take, and that's something that I uh, greatly respect. And I think that they uh, pull off the lyricism well. The album is well written in all honesty, which is, I don't want to say rare for uh, punk albums, but I will say that uh, lyrics were never and still are not today the uh, main focus of most punk records. But this album is well written, it's well performed, and it's an intelligent album if you can believe it, even with all of the uh, incredibly simplistic but uh, raw instrumentals and uh, HR screaming different lyrics directly in your ears. It is a very intelligent and serious record, all things considered. And I do think that Bad Brains have earned the right to be listed as among the greatest political punk acts of their time, and that's saying something, considering this band were active at the same time as the Dead Kennedys and The Clash. With how long it's taken me to get to the instrumental aspect of this record, I think you can kind of guess what I'm going to say here, but the actual instrumentals are the least important part of Bad Brains' self-titled debut. This isn't to say the instrumentals are bad, they're actually quite good. You've got bassist Jer Daryl Jennifer and drummer Earl Hudson. You have some really strong work on tracks like Fearless Vampire Killers. You've also got the semi-iconic, I won't say completely iconic, but at least in punk circles, uh, very well-respected and beloved guitarist Dr. No, doing some great work on songs like Super Touch slash Ship Fit. There's some really uh, great work from him in particular, very... Uh, simplistic but uh, very effective and very, uh, like I said before, garage-like kind of work. And I think that overall that simplicity of instrumentation really does not only highlight their ability to play something effective that properly carries a record along when it has songs that, generally speaking, max out at only a couple minutes, but it also does highlight the political themes and overall sort of a raw and occasionally violent and sort of a unforgivingly lo-fi atmosphere that the record builds overall. So yeah, I think the instrumentation is strong in its own sort of a simple, non-complex, very uh, three-chord kind of way. So overall, I do think that uh, Bad Brains' self-titled debut has definitely earned the right to be considered a milestone in punk music. I mean, the political activism mixed with the energy here is just perfect and easily ranks among the best of all time, even today. I will say that that sort of uh, lo-fi, low-budget uh, production and sound does cause a lot of the album to sound at least slightly dated to modern ears, but then again, I guess that really doesn't matter considering it's a hardcore album. It doesn't really matter how polished or unpolished your album is. It's still a hardcore album. And even if this were the worst sounding uh, album of all time in terms of sound quality, anyone that says this album doesn't want them, to, doesn't make them want to just like power through the world's most intense workout regimen is lying. This album is absolutely uh, chaotic in terms of energy and power. So with that being said, uh, I think this warrants four and a half stars out of five. It's a very uh, raw, musically honest record. And it does sound like it was recorded in someone's garage or basement or attic, but there's nothing wrong with that because it sounds amazing at the same time for all the reasons that so many other albums can sound absolutely horrible. So yeah, four and a half stars out of five, and uh, with that, that's the end of this review. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.